Hi everyone, my name is Kathy and this is Travis and we're here with some of the zoo's most interesting and rarest birds, the California condors. As always, we're live, so please shoot any questions that you have over to the Facebook and we will try to answer as many as possible. You'll find some at-home activities also listed on the link for the live. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you so much for all of your donations. And if you feel so inclined, we appreciate each and every dollar. It helps us to do some of this amazing conservation work. So Travis, can you tell us a little bit about where we are right now? Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for being here live with us today. We're here at the Oregon Zoo in Washington Park and you're looking at Coea, stud book number 42, California condor. This is our Condors of the Columbia exhibit. It's a beautiful area for these three birds that we have here and it's been a, a bond supported endeavor by the people of the Willamette Valley region. So thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to provide ed education. What we have here is one of the most critically endangered birds in the entire world. There's less than 500 California condors on earth. Of course, they're only found here in the United States and they're one of the most iconic Western species we have. You think about grizzly bears, you think about salmon, you think about elk. California condors are right up there with them. They've, uh, they've become critically endangered over the years. And at one point their numbers went all the way down to 27 individuals. So what we do here at the Oregon Zoo is we breed California condors for reintroduction. And the, the, to this point, the Oregon Zoo um, in September, we'll have released 70 California condors back into the wild. And that's the, the main objective of what we do at the, at the Oregon Zoo. And that's all operated at our off-site facility in Oregon City. And I think we have some video footage of that that we'll roll um, that shows you the Johnson Center, which is our breeding facility for these birds. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what makes them endangered? So over the years, the California condor actually persisted across the entire United States. There's fossil records that show these animals being found in Florida, New York, Texas. The pressures over the years have increasingly moved these animals westward. They require large, large animals, large megafauna. So they're always attracted to areas where you'll find large carcasses. Obviously, condors are vultures. They're carrion feeders. You can see that bald head. That's so they can get up into a carcass so they don't get the muck and the mess all matted to their feathers. That's one of their, one of their amazing adaptations. They're also very sensitive to many things. They're sensitive to trash. They're sensitive to um, loss of habitat, of course. These animals require either cliffs, caves, large massive trees for their nest building. So as, as humans have expanded westward, we've continued to push the California condor out. We have other in inputs into the environment. Um, Well-meaning people, hunters are conservationists and they use uh, lead ammunition. This is something that's been used for many years. That actually has a deleterious effect on many animals in the, in the environment and condors are not safe from that. Uh, small amounts of lead can, can kill California condors. So there's, and there's alternatives, copper ammunition for instance, that can be used. Hunters are amazing conservationists and there's certain steps that can be done to help, help uh, move, move away from some of, the, some of the effects, negative effects on these animals in the wild. Absolutely. We've got some natural history questions coming at us. So the first one comes from Beckett and Lucas. They want to know how long is a condor's wingspan? Beckett, Lucas, thank you so much for watching. These guys are around nine feet, nine and a half feet. Some things you'll say, maybe say a California condor will be up to 10 feet. Um, Andean condors are the largest soaring birds and Andean condor will be up to 10 feet. California condors average nine, nine and a half feet. Cool. Nicholas wants to know, um, they look like vultures, but are condors considered vultures? Condors are vultures. Okay. There's a lot of different discussions about classifying these animals. They are birds of prey, and there's different, different opinions depending on who you ask. But they're absolutely vultures. They're absolutely birds of prey. They don't have grasping feet. So a lot of the eagles, different animals like that, use their feet to grasp prey. Condors are actually closely related to storks, pelicans, when you look at it from a cladistic perspective, taxonomy and classification. So if you look at their feet, it almost looks like a chicken foot. Mm -hmm. They're flat, they're not grasping, they're not like an eagle. Cool. Emily and Peggy, both separately, want to know a little bit more about these wing tags. Do wild condors get them? What do they mean? 
Et Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for that question. That's a great question. Each condor is, is closely monitored, whether they're here in zoological care or they're out in the field being monitored by field teams. It's called a patagial tag, which you see on their wing. And right here on Kawea, he has number 42. He's actually the, num the, the 42nd California condor ever identified by scientists. And again, there's less than 500 of these animals in the, in the wild right now. Christine, have, oh. go ahead. Yeah, Christina and her daughter want to know why is their skin pink like that? Thanks, Christina. So these condors are incredibly expressive and you'll see a varying degree of, of coloration that they'll, they'll show you. They can raise this hood that's down here. They can express these colors. It, it's, it's just, it's another form of communication, mm -hmm. nonverbal communication. So you're obviously very close to these birds, both physically and you work closely with them. Denise wants to know, can they be pet? Absolutely, absolutely not. You don't okay. want to you don't want to touch a condor. You don't want to mm -hmm. pet a condor. We always want to give them their space in the, in the, in the, in the, in the room that they need to operate. Um, no, we don't touch our condors. We do get them in hand annually for vaccinations and vet mm -hmm. checkups, um, but that's the extent of it. Great. And Liza wants to know, how old can they get? Liza, that's a great question. So actually, this program has not existed for the entire lifespan of a California condor. Oh, wow. What we do know is that Andean condors have lived as long as 70 years okay. in human care. We expect that a California condor could live about that long, but documentation shows that California condors can live between 50 and 60 years. Great. I think we should see some footage now of the earlier end of a condor's lifespan. Absolutely. We have some cool, Let's look cool at footage eggs. of a baby con bunch of baby condors uh, out at Johnson, Johnson Center. So at our Johnson Center, we have 43 birds currently. And again, our sole purpose is to release condors for, for return to the wild. Um, and what you're looking at is a picture of one of our chicks hopping around our nest rooms. We have 16 different nest rooms at our Johnson Center facility. So we have capacity for um, up to 16 pairs of birds. This year we hatched out, we had 12 eggs and we hatched out seven birds. Um, so the, the mission is, is going strong out there at Johnson. The staff out there is incredible. Um, we've got support from U.S. Fish and Wildlife and all the different partners to make this uh, program work. And it's an amazing thing to be a part of. Yeah, absolutely. Jojo wants to know if condors that we raise get released back into the wild. And we also have footage of that that we can show, but can you talk a little bit about that release process? Sure, Jojo, absolutely. So, so yes, the condors that we raise at the facility, that is their purpose, um, the, per the facility out at Johnson Center. The three birds that you see here are here more as ambassador animals. And this is actually Tumir. Tumir's three years old. He's stud book number 869. So contrast that. You can see the 69 on his wing tag. That's number 869. Contrast that with Mr. Kawea, who's number 42. So Kawea's 35 years old. Tumir here is just over three, three years and four months. And you can see he doesn't have his, his, uh, all of his coloration yet, but he's starting to creep in. He's got that pink neck. He's starting to look a little bit more like an adult every day. But the young birds have started out with the blackheads. Great. We have a question from Carter who wants to know how tall a California condor can get. That's a good question, Carter. Um, you know, if you stretched them out, they'd probably be about uh, three feet tall. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure. I've never done that. Never mm -hmm. done that measurement, but we could certainly do that. Yeah. We have another question from Jackson who wants to know what is their main source of food? What's their prey? Jackson, thank you so much for the question. Out in the wild, these animals, like I mentioned, they go after megafauna um, carcasses. So they're looking for pinnipeds on the coast, seals and sea lions, whales. They're looking for elks, um, bear, large animals, um, and they feed in large groups. Here at the zoo, we give them a, a wide variety. We have a wonderful relationship with a farm, Banson Farms, out near McMinnville, and they provide us with um, dairy calves. Mm. And we actually, if you've come to the zoo before and you've seen a carcass feeding, it's from the wonderful people out at Banson Farms that provide us with this opportunity. And that sets these condors up. Um, we, we feed it to the animals here, but also out at the Johnson Center. And that sets those animals up for success after they're released. They know how to get into these carcasses. So that's a huge win for us. We also feed rabbits. We feed rats. And we try to give them a nice variety. So they'll get salmon. They'll get, they'll get, uh, they'll get any number of things. Actually, after we get done with our Facebook Live today, if anybody's out at the zoo, we are going to put the, uh, one of our calf carcasses out here in just about 30 minutes. Great. 
Beckett and Lucas are back with another question, um, and that's echoed by Jennifer. How many eggs can a California condor lay? I'm so glad you guys are still walk watching. Um, the, uh, the eggs in the wild, a California condor will lay about one egg every other year. They'll raise wow. one chick every other year. In captivity, in human care, we've, we have some strategies where we're able to take an egg, incubate it, potentially foster that with another bird, mm -hmm. and then what we call it double clutching. So the, the condors will lay another egg. So we're actually able to get two, even potentially three in extreme cases, um, eggs from a condor each season. That's so cool. The California condor, condor recovery story is one of my favorites. Can you take us back in time and talk us through how this all came together and who was working on that project? And Sure. Yeah, again, this is a U.S. Fish and Wildlife driven project. Um, back in the 60s, the California condor was one of the very first animals added to the Endangered Species Act. So they've been in, in decline and they've had a critically endangered status for, for quite a while now. As numbers deteriorated and declined, there had been some very limited success with breeding Andean condors in human care and captivity. And, and the folks at the San Diego Zoo and the Los Angeles Zoo where this began started to talk about maybe we can translate our, our, our efforts with Andean condors over to California condors. Fast forward to 1987, there was only 20, 22 birds left in the entire world and they, the decision was made to bring them all in to human care for breeding at the San Diego Zoo and the LA Zoo. And from there, releases began in the early 90s and we've been doing it ever since. We've gone from 22 animals to currently 488 California condors. Wow. So Corey wants to know, that feeds perfectly into this question, Corey wants to know what is the impact of our program? How many condors have we released? Thank you so much for that question. So again, um, come September, we're taking six more birds out to meet with field team members. Um, that'll bring the Oregon Zoo's total to 70. Mm -hmm. 70 California condors that have been released. That's awesome. Um, it's a tremendous, it's, it's a tremendous effort. It's a tremendous um, amount of work that takes a lot of collaboration. And, and all of the people that are, live in the metro area and the three county area here in, in Oregon should take great amount of pride in their contributions to, to this project because we're all in it together. Yeah. Absolutely. And so Mark wants to know about the release. Do they stay in the same area after they're released? I'd like to hear a little more about where we do those releases. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's several different areas. There's really three or four main release sites currently. And, 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 and then a very exciting development that's coming where we have a new release site in Northern California. So right now you'll find condors released at Vermilion Cliffs in Arizona and then throughout California. So Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, Kern, Monterey, San Luis Obispo. Those are the current counties at the release sites where condors are being released right now. There's essentially three separate species that aren't really intermingling. The Arizona population goes up into Utah. The Southern California population stays a little bit more isolated. Then you have a population of condors off the coast of Big Sur that intermingles over into Pinnacles National Park. Mm. Wade wants to know, shifting gears a little bit, Wade wants to know what are those white feathers on his beak for? Oh, <laughs> so, so just like you'll see with as ducks are born or chickens and you hear about downy feathers, you, maybe you've got a down feather comforter. All birds have downy feathers and they do a lot of preening. Birds spend a large, large portion of their day, whether it's a hummingbird or a California condor, straightening out their feathers, cleaning their feathers, making sure everything's right. He's just got a piece of downy feather stuck to his nose. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cute. Um, we have a question about how far they can fly from Logan. How far can they fly? In a given day, a California condor can go 100 miles and wow. search for food. And they can do that at speeds of 50 miles an hour using thermals for the most part. There's been recent uh, studies where a California condor has been observed for hours, five hours or more, where they don't even flap their wings. They're incredibly, uh, incredibly, um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? They just, they're able to conserve their energy so well. They only use what they need to use. Pretty efficient. Very efficient. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Um, so Mandy wants to know a little bit more about why lead is a threat. Why are we encouraging hunters to switch away from lead bullets? Right. And again, hunting is such a wonderful and important conservation effort. And Absolutely. hunters are one of the first conservationists um, that, that have materialized as we've decided that we need to take more responsibility for our eco ecological role as humans. The lead impact on the environment is widespread. It doesn't, doesn't just affect, it's not just introduced by hunters, it's also introduced by, by fishermen, mm. by trash that's not disposed of properly. So certainly not trying to paint any one group is causing an issue. But using lead ammunition does 
does impart lead into the environment. So say a hunter shoots an elk, he field dresses that elk and leaves behind the gut pile. That gut pile has tiny, tiny microscopic shards of lead throughout it. Hmm. A couple of microscopic pieces of lead is enough to put a condor in dire straits where they need serious veterinary attention very quickly. So that's just one small change that people can make switching to non-lead ammunition. And there's an entire group dedicated to this, to the North American Non-Lead Partnership. It's a wonderful organization that's doing a tremendous amount of education on non-lead ammunition. Great. So they're called California condors, but Molly wants to know, are they or have they ever been native to Oregon? So yeah, that's a great point. These are iconic species of the West. They're certainly not limited to California. They currently live in Arizona, Utah, Mexico. Historically, the California condor has absolutely lived in Oregon. They've been seen all the way up into British Columbia. So all the way up the coast. Lewis and Clark noted California condors on their trip through the Columbia River Gorge. So we know for a fact that California condors That's have so lived cool. in Oregon. So this is gonna be our last question. There are so many good ones, but we do have to wrap it up. Oliver wants to know about their nests. Do they build nests and how do they do it? Great question, Oliver. They're opportunistic. If they find the right tree that's been snapped off and it's got a nice hollow spot, that's a pretty good spot. They don't need a lot of nesting material. If they find a cave, they can kind of make a scratch out in the dirt. Mm -hmm. They don't use a lot of nesting material. So they want an ideal spot, but they don't need a lot to add to it to make it work for them. Great. Thank you so much, Travis. This has been so informational. We hope that you have found this to be fun and educational and also given you a new appreciation for, we think, some pretty beautiful birds. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have the donate button on the site if you feel inclined to donate towards this project. We also would like to point you towards our at-home activities. That's a great way to continue the conversation and get a little more involved with the Condor work. So thanks for being here. This has been a fantastic opportunity to share a pretty cool project. An amazing we, project. Yeah, we hope to see you on live again soon. Thank you guys.